Good evening, everybody. Um, so at about uh, 7.30 this evening, you know, two officers from the St. Petersburg Police Department responded uh, to the apartment complex behind me here at 4050 4th Street North. Um, the essence of it is there was a neighbor dispute uh, between a 65 year, I'm sorry, a 55 year old white male um, and a neighbor. Uh, apparently he had been giving her a hard time. He had taken some of her belongings during the day. Uh, and again, this is all preliminary information and I'll say what I always say in these, I'm telling you everything I know as I know it, when I know it, uh, but it's all subject to change because there's a lot of witnesses uh, to this. Uh, those witnesses have not been thoroughly interviewed, so I'm just telling you what we know now and the preliminary information is is that he had taken some of this woman's items and thrown them in a dumpster and he'd also taken some of her items and thrown them over the second floor balcony so the st p police were called uh, and two officers responded uh, Kristen thomas and allison savarese and as they were conducting the investigation they identified uh, this 55 year old male and he is the deceased who was shot by officer savarese I'm not going to identify him at this point, only because his next of kin has not been identified. Uh, otherwise, I would tell you who he is, but once we notify the family, then we'll uh, give you his name. Um, and they identified this guy uh, as a suspect. Uh, Officer Thomas uh, went back to the St. Petersburg Police Department as part of the investigation. Uh, Officer Savaris was here, still at the scene. Um, and she went up to the second floor, uh, so it's directly behind me here in the apartment complex. And she went up the stairs, and as she was walking up the stairs, she was walking from the west to the east on the second floor balcony. She saw the suspect, and he was outside of his apartment, uh, and he was watering some plants. And she knew who he was. She called out to him by name and told him that she needed to talk to him. Um, as he started moving toward her, um, he appeared to be somewhat aggressive toward her. He, at that point, was told by Officer Savaris that she was going to detain him because they were conducting a criminal investigation and for him to put his hands behind his back. Uh, he refused, he reached out and he pushed her um, and a struggle ensued. At that point, uh, Officer Savarese took him to the ground and they were struggling on the ground. After they struggled on the ground for a short period of time, uh, he stood up and she then stood up. And as they both stood up, he reached down and uh, this person, this 55 year old white male is six feet, about 175 pounds. Uh, he's much taller than Officer Savarese. And he was reaching down and he grabbed her by the neck and he was squeezing her around the neck. She said she couldn't breathe. Uh, she estimates, and again, this is an estimate at this time, is, is that it was somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds it was a very long time to have somebody grabbing you around the neck, squeezing, and she said she couldn't breathe. At that point, because she was in fear for her life, she couldn't breathe, he was choking her out, is when she fired two rounds and struck him and he was deceased uh, and taken to the hospital. So that's what we know at this point. Um, again, it's still very early uh, in the investigation. Uh, this investigation is being conducted under the recent protocol uh, that all of the law enforcement agency heads in Pinellas County agreed to a couple of weeks ago. Uh, because it's a shooting by a St. Petersburg police officer, uh, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office is a responsible entity for conducting the investigation, and it's being conducted by the uh, Officer Involved Shooting Task Force. Uh, the St. Petersburg Police Department is not involved in this investigation. Uh, it is again being done by the task force, and for the purposes of this investigation, uh, I'm in charge of it and leading it, and the task force members include the Pinellas Park Police Department, the Clearwater Police Department, and of course the State Attorney's Office is here, and they'll conduct their own independent and parallel investigation. Um, he does have a criminal history. Uh, not sure at this point exactly all of what his criminal history is, but he does have a criminal history. Um, and again, we'll share more information as we get it. Uh, it'll probably be a while uh, tonight, but as soon as we can notify the next of kin, we'll get, release his name to you. Anybody have any questions? How's Officer Savarese doing right now? I mean, things can change, as we know, in the blink of an eye. Yeah, you know, obviously she's shaken up. You know, I just saw her here at the scene. Uh, she's now gone back to uh, St. Pete Police Headquarters. Um, and I can tell you that she does have marks on her neck um, from where he was choking her. Uh, the collar brass on her uniform was ripped off. So it looked like that there was a pretty significant struggle uh, that occurred. 
you know, as I said, you know, there are a lot of witnesses to this, so we, we need to interview everybody. But thankfully, she's okay. Uh, of course, she's shaken up any time that you go through that type of a situation where somebody's choking you out and you can't breathe. And then, unfortunately, you have to defend yourself and, and you have to use uh, force. And, and, you know, I want to stress, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, this being a shooting and talking about the force being used, but this isn't a response to somebody attacking her. Uh, this was because her life was in danger, because she couldn't breathe, and because he decided that he was going to try and choke her out. And so she did what she had to do under the circumstances, and uh, we are very thankful that she's okay. Veteran officer. Pardon me? Veteran officer. She She's been a, a police officer here in St. Petersburg for about four years. No, he was in front of her, so they were on the ground, and when they stood up, and they were facing each other. Uh, so she was on that second floor balcony. In fact, she was facing to the east, so her back was to the west. So he would have been the opposite way. So he was facing west, and so they were face to face like this. And he reaches out like this, and he grabs her by the neck and just starts choking her. Now, previous to that, uh, according to Officer Savarese, he had also reached for her gun belt. Uh, she couldn't tell whether he was reaching for the gun or the taser or doing something, but he was reaching down there. She could feel a tug down there. But he reached out very violently, uh, and it was face-to-face. -face. And so she's sitting there staring this guy down who's got his hand, who's a tall guy, much taller than she is, weighs a lot more than she does, bigger than she is, who's just got this grip on her neck and is choking her out. And she was in fear for her life. She couldn't breathe. And she fired when his hand was around her neck. So again, we've got to flush all this out. I don't know exactly where all of the witnesses are, but generally, yes, is, is that uh, the apartment complex behind us would be a square with a, a courtyard in the middle of the square. And this is a second floor balcony. So it would be an apartment door that opens out into the courtyard area. So there'd be plenty of opportunity for people that were either on that uh, second floor or people that were across the courtyard uh, on their balconies as well to see it. But there are, uh, we've identified uh, probably somewhere around 15 witnesses that need to be interviewed. Sheriff, can you talk about really the bravery it takes you know, to, for officers to get into the situation? I mean, Chief Dugan was talking about a shooting spree last week, and he's like, the right. guy you know, was shot, glass on him, and he got right back in the fight. And right. you know, this is a time when she knew that things were happening and it probably was going to be dangerous, and yet she, you know. Well, she did her job. And, you know, and she walked up there and she knew uh, that she was going to have an encounter with this guy. and. You know, she tried for her safety uh, to detain him and to take him into custody, and that would have been the safest thing to do. So she was trying to prevent something from happening. Uh, and he's the one that escalated it, and he's the one that took it uh, to really the highest level uh, of resistance and using force and aggressive force against her. So, you know, she was trying to minimize it, trying to do the safe thing, and he's the one that really uh, tried to kill her uh, by choking her out. As again, we're thankful that she's okay. Uh, dangerous situation, um, and you know she was just doing her job. But these things happen, and and unfortunately, you know people get aggressive against law enforcement, and it didn't have to. It didn't have to happen this way. Uh, but when you're being choked out, you do what you have to do. It was all because of some items that were on his neighbor's porch. Was it a uh, burglary or just? Yeah, we got to flush all that out, but but I can tell you, it, 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 for him and what they were investigating, it wasn't worth his life, and, and he didn't have to go where he did and do what he did. Uh, is is that they were, and you know, we'll find out exactly what these items were, but they're not some high value items. Uh, you know, in any in, in any regard, is that no matter what it was, is there's absolutely, of course, no reason uh, when a law enforcement officer, a police officer, tells you is that you be taken into custody, put your hands behind your back, is, is that the reaction isn't to reach out and to push her and engage in a fight with her and go to the ground and fight and then continue to resist actively and violently and stand up and then take your hand and put it around her neck and try and choke her out. I mean, that's so, you know, what was underlying becomes irrelevant once he escalates it to that point. Were there numerous 911 calls or was it the neighbor that you stole from that called or I'm sure the plot was happening? 
It, yeah, we got to flush all that out. She was on the radio calling for help uh, afterwards, so it, you know, but but people were hearing it. So you know, I don't know, Melody. You know, if if others uh, were while well, she was fighting with him, whether others were calling nine one one. It's too early to tell. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. All right. Think, last question. Do you yeah. think this will help uh, this, um, this method? Thank you. Memorandum of understanding. Do you think this will help agencies with the transparency? Well, I think that's why we did this, is, is that so the agency that employs the officer that's involved in the shooting is not involved in this investigation at all. So this is what it's designed for, uh, and to provide this level of transparency and objectiveness and thoroughness. Um, and so far, so good. Uh, this is the first one we've had. Uh, we've got a bunch of people who are learning how to work together, um, and there's some things to work out with that because it's the first time we've done it, but we're working it out. And overall, I'm very pleased with how it's going. Yeah. Thanks, sir. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah.